Today we'll be going over some of the basic functions of Star Logo Nova, which will help you create your game starting today and continuing for the rest of the week. Here is a sample project created by two middle school students. As you can see at the top of the page, they've given their game a title and they've written a detailed description about it. In this game, you're a shark, and it's your objective to eat as many fish as you can in 30 seconds. If you get at least 15 points, you win. In order to move the shark, you use the arrow keys, and you have to be holding down the E key when you run into a fish in order to eat the fish. This part in the middle is called Spaceland, and it's where all of your gameplay occurs, as you might have noticed from playing all of the demo games. These gray buttons and boxes are called widgets. If we click on the Setup widget, then the game is created but doesn't start. This type of button is known as a push button because it only does something when the button is pushed. In contrast, we have the Play Game button that, when you click it, it stays on and keeps running. This is known as a toggle button, meaning that the button stays on until you turn it off. There are many different types of widgets that you can create, and each different widget has a different purpose. If you click on Edit Widgets, and then New Widget, then you can see a list of the different kinds of widgets that you might want to create. Take about five minutes to play around with the game and see how the different buttons and widgets work together. What kinds of objects and characters are involved in the game? There is a shark, some gems, some fish, and some kelp. These are known as agents, which is basically just any character or object that follows instructions. A group of agents is called a breed, and there are several breeds in this demo. There's the player, the flower, other characters, and gem. These are agents that share basic common functions, like they do the same thing as each other. Um, so all flowers do the same thing, and all other characters do the same thing. This means that if you want a bunch of characters to do the same thing, then you create one breed for that group of characters. For example, notice how the fish just swim around. They are part of the other characters breed. If we wanted to change how fish swim, then we could just go to the other characters page, and then we could like maybe change forward one to be forward two, and then they would swim twice as fast. So even though I only change the code in one place, it affects all of the agents of that breed. You can look at the world from many different angles and views. Notice how the camera currently follows the shark around as you move. This is referred to as agent view, since you are following the view of the agent. Additionally, you have the option to use the zoom in and zoom out buttons to change your perspective that way. If you want more direct control over the camera, you can click on Reset Camera, and then you can hold down the Alt or Option key and click and drag the screen to rotate it around. Play around with these controls and complete exercise number one. For this part, we'll be working in what is known as the workspace. All of the code that makes your game run is here. You'll notice right away that the code looks like puzzle pieces or blocks. As a programmer, you can combine these blocks in different ways to determine how your agents will move and what they will do when the game is being played. Each block is located in a specific drawer organized by their function. You should try to learn the general themes of each drawer and what types of blocks can be found in each drawer. This will come in handy when you begin to program your game. So let's go over the drawers in more detail. First is the Agents drawer, which contains blocks that enable the user to create, delete, or scatter agents. You can also do things like take the camera, as you saw from the shark moving around with the camera following it. The next drawer is the Detection drawer. It contains blocks that allow the agents to detect collisions or detect other agents who are nearby. The environment drawer is primarily used for terrain modification, like changing the terrain color or clearing the terrain. And it also has the clock of the system, as well as the world traits. World traits can be thought of as a way to store information where everybody can access that information. 
The interface drawer contains blocks that are used to interact with the widgets. Widgets are created separately by going to the Edit Widgets and then New Widget buttons up in Spaceland. But the blocks are what allow your program to interact with those. Widgets will be explained in more detail later. The keyboard drawer contains blocks that allow you to interact with the keyboard controls, like the up arrow, the down arrow, and things like that. The logic drawer contains blocks that let you do different things if something is true or false. For example, you might use an if block that says, if my color is red, then do one thing. Or if my color is blue, then do something else. This drawer also holds blocks to let you do things over and over, like the loop and repeat blocks. The math drawer contains all of the possible mathematical operators that Star Logo Nova supports. The movement drawer contains blocks that enable the agents to move, like to go forward or backward, to turn, to face toward another agent. A procedure is a grouping of commands that perform a specific function. For example, washing your hands requires turning on the water, getting some soap, rubbing your hands together, rinsing your hands, turning off the water. In the same way, you might program a procedure for your agents to do something. Once you've created the procedure, then you can call that procedure from other places in your code without having to rewrite all of those instructions. The traits drawer contains blocks that allow the user to set and change the various properties or traits of an agent. Some of the most commonly used traits are things like the agent's color and shape. We didn't talk about the lists, sound, variables, and debugger drawers, but you can get into those later if you need some of those blocks. Take a few minutes now to look through the drawers and see what blocks are available.